Every day in Britain, a dozen postal workers are attacked by dogs as they deliver our mail. But because the attacks generally take place on their owner's private property, prosecutions are often impossible. In the past year, 6,000 adults and children were admitted to hospital after dog attacks, and the numbers have been rising. Newsnight has learned that just keeping dangerous dogs in police kennels is costing almost £4 million a year. After a lengthy government consultation, its expected proposals will be published next month. So what should be done about dangerous dogs, or perhaps about their dangerous owners? Steve Smith reports. They've become a ubiquitous feature of modern life in Britain. Dogs you might hesitate to pet. Often known as dangerous dogs. They've been linked to 6,000 attacks a year. So who needs them? And what are we going to do about them? And that's him and John Paul. They used to play regular. It's amazing how one little person can affect so many people, like proper ripple effects. People's lives, it's, um, none of us are the same people. Your whole life just changes. You change as a person, that everything you knew is just gone within seconds. Three years ago, Angela McGlynn's four-year-old son, John Paul, was attacked and killed by a pit bull here in Liverpool. He was at his granny's house at the time. The dog was a trusted family pet. She tried the best to save John Paul. She couldn't, but she saves herself and my other son was there as well. I mean, I could have lost all three of them that night. Angela McGlynn's MP wants to see the law changed on dangerous dogs. At present, it's hard to prosecute owners over attacks which happen on their own premises, she says. And the government seems to have fallen silent on the whole subject. We cannot afford to see another child die. We've seen six children lose their lives since 2006. And what we're calling for is the government to take some action and respond to their very own consultation, which concluded 20 months ago. We've seen nothing from them, heard nothing. It's not acceptable. It seemed everyone we met had a story to tell their MP about an all-too-close encounter with a dangerous dog. A chap in the next street got hold of the dog and actually threw it into the middle of Prescott Road, right. pushed me into the, into the news agents, yeah. and the dog shot off right. the road, pushed the news agent's door and got me in, in the shop itself. All right, lads, could we have a word with you for news night about your dog? Hey, shut, shut. Shut. Chico. Now... Sorry. You got him under control there? Yeah. What is, what is your dog? Baron. What breed is it? It's staff crossed with a whippet. Staff crossed with a whippet? Yeah. It's four years old. Daddy! Shut! Shut I. Are you aware your dog, your dog just tried to bite our cameraman there? No, she just bar barking. She well, she, she tried to bite his leg. It looks like, but she didn't. She never bites nobody. So. What have you got a dog like that for? Uh, I just got her. You know. She, lo she looks, you know, she looks uh, how she looks, but uh, aggressive, at, uh, you know. But uh, it's absolutely sweet dog. May I introduce your local MP? Hello. Hello. Do you have any thoughts about this creature and our friend here? I'm your local member of parliament and I am campaigning against uh, dogs that might um, impact or might um, hurt or affect other people. No, well, you know, I was in this park like uh, every, every, every day and she's play with the other dogs and, uh, you know, never a situation like this. But would you let her near any children? Uh, no. Are you worried that your dog could bite someone? Yeah. You are worried? Uh, you know, basically any dog can bite, bite so someone. You... So what did you make of that? And that's the very thing that I'm concerned about. And that man said that he was the, f the fifth owner. There's four previous owners of that dog, and he didn't know whether he necessarily had the skills to look after that animal. We saw uh, the dog off the leash. Um, I was quite scared by the dog. We saw it go for the cameraman, and my concern is about a child in this park or another adult or another dog. But he just walks off to work or whatever he's doing. 
What on earth is anyone, including you, going to do about that in reality? That's why we need to see a very, very quick change in the law. Uh, the law as it stands isn't robust enough to, to deal with that. If there was a, a dog warden in the area or someone from the council or someone from the police, they could serve a dog control notice so that owner was then responsible for ensuring that his dog was kept on a lead at all times rather than off the lead as we saw it. At the moment, the law targets only four breeds of dog, regardless of what the animals may have done or not done. Owners may not be prosecuted over dog attacks which occur on their own property. And a freedom of information request by Ms Berger has revealed police are spending almost £4 million a year on kenneling dogs. In her own area, Merseyside alone, they spent almost £300,000. And in London, the figure was the best part of three million pounds. The police impounded Bodhi here because he's an illegal breed, even though he's never attacked anyone. Denise Evans managed to get him returned. She says the real problem is the way dogs are trained. There are vicious ones of these, and I wouldn't want to come across one because they are strong dogs. And what I'm saying is, if you're going to own a dog like this, you've got to be a responsible owner. You, it's not the dog, it's the owner. The owner's got to have control of the dog. We do need powers to concentrate on people who use dogs as weapons in the communities, people who are seeking to use it as a status. And clearly in certain communities, that is of grave concern. So therefore we do need robust legislation to tackle these offenders and ensure that they understand uh, their responsibility. The government said tonight it would announce new proposals on the control of dogs in the coming weeks. Well, the Labour MP, Lusanna Berger, is in favour of changes to the current law, as you've seen, and Mark Littlewood of the Institute of Economic Affairs is somewhat sceptical that any new laws are necessary. Um, do you think that the 1991 Dangerous Dogs Act is just a waste of space? I think the combination of our eight pieces of legislation need consolidating and we need a new act, and that's why there's a broad coalition of lots of different organisations, including our enforcement agencies, including our trade unions, you mentioned postal workers, the CWU, uh, all those animal welfare char charities that have come together, Labour, you know, saying very robustly that we need to see a change, an urgent change in the legislation, which is why we initiated, uh, under the previous Labour government, a consultation into the dangerous dogs legislation. That concluded in June 2010. You just said that the government said in the coming weeks. I've heard that the government said it's going to respond to its own consultation in the coming weeks for the past 20 months and, and what we need is some urgent response mm. from government. Um, why are you against more legislation in this? I think we've got to put this problem in context. I mean th there's some horrific stories in the package we've just seen but this isn't an enormous problem. About the it same, is if you've bitten. <laughs> well of course it is but about the same number of people in Britain die from wasp and bee bites as die from dog bites. I mean, it's ghastly, of course, if it happens to your four-year-old child. It's absolutely harrowing. But let's not build this completely out of proportion. I think that we need to put clear responsibility on the owner, both criminal conduct, if your dog actually attacks another member of the public, and compensation if there's an injury. Once you've got that sorted, I think the last thing we need is microchipping, local bureaucrats with dog control orders or anything else. Mm. That's not going to make us much safer. What uh, this question of private property. I mean, what do you want to see done on that? Do you think that it should be the same whether you're bitten on your, uh, by somebody in a garden by a dog or on the street? Is that, is that part of what you would like to see? Harry? That's one of the, the, the five key things that we're, that we're calling for is that the law should be extended to cover private property so that victims can get the justice that they deserve if they're attacked on private property as much as if it happens in a public place. There's very little powers afforded to the police to pursue anyone if uh, someone's bitten. That includes, uh, you mentioned the postal workers, every single day 15 postal Postal workers are attacked delivering our mail, the social workers that come to our houses, the care workers, it's just all those people that are affected and there's no recourse for those people. Oh, no, I'm very concerned about that. I, I mean, I, I do think that you're, on your private property you can take risks and other people can decide whether to enter it. I mean, if you enter my house, I smoke a lot of cigarettes. You will be exposed to cigarette smoke. I've got internet leads all over the place. You might trip up. 
Uh, if I've got a bull mastiff in my living room, perhaps you'll choose not to bring your children round. Look, there may be a particular issue for postal workers and others Do who have to... That, well, yeah, you might actually say this postman is not going to visit number 41 because yeah. they've got a very dangerous dog. But I don't think you should apply that to all private property. But, that would but, just be an exemption for a particular but postman. But it does seem weird if you can... If, if you punch somebody in the street, that's a crime. If you punch somebody in your front garden, that could possibly be a crime. But in your case of your dog, it's not. That seems ridiculous. No, I don't, think, I, I don't think that is a comparison, Gavin. I mean, uh, if you punch somebody in your living room, you'll be accused of a crime. This is a question of almost a health and safety risk that might run out of control. If you deliberately feed the neighbour's kids to the dogs, you will be done to, for a crime. This is more a negligence and a health and safety issue. And I think it's important that doesn't extend to the living room of private property. I have to okay. disagree. I would completely. The fact is, we, we, we don't have that power already, and um, so many people aren't afforded protection. People are disfigured and disabled every day. And the figures themselves, and it's around 6,000 people that are hospitalised every year, doesn't include those people that have to go to their GPs or the accident treatment centres. This affects a lot of people. 11 deaths, I think, is too many. And I think, and I think that in itself requires a change in the law. But for, also for those thousands of people that are injured, it needs some urgent But what attention. about the other things that Mark was saying, ridiculous, you know, making people have to chip their dog, dogs? Many people do. Many dog owners do. I mean, is the is that really the problem, or is it bad owners? Yeah. It's about encouraging responsible ownership and looking beyond the breed to look at the deed. But the issue at the moment is that there's very little preventative powers extended to either the police or the councils um, to actually deal with this problem before an attack takes place. And we mentioned before about the, the cost that uh, the police forces up and down this country are incurring. They are doing a fantastic job under very difficult circumstances, and they need all the support and powers afforded to them so they can take action so we don't see another person die. But we don't need to give the police that support. We need to make it plain that the owner bears the responsibility. That if it rips your jacket, the owner's got to pay for a new jacket for you. If it harms you, the owner's got to pay compensation and possibly faces a criminal offence. As long as we shift the responsibility clearly and plainly onto the owner and don't make it the responsibility of the police, but the local council... Li but is the implication of that then, you might resent this, but licensing? I mean, if you're a bad owner, you get your licence taken I away. I think the, the only thing I would say is that in the same way that we have compulsory insurance for people who drive motor cars, there might be a certain breed of dog for which you would have to have compulsory insurance. You have to have third-party insurance if you drive a car. You might apply that to certain risky breeds of dogs. But keep the responsibility with the owner, not with off dog or whichever particular <laughs> bureaucratic agency. Dog of as of as as but the yeah, point no. about dog control notices is about empowering owners to be to be more responsible and to help them actually to look after their dogs and to make sure that they don't cause uh, any, any problems or, or that they don't attack anyone. But would you would you be in favour of some licensing system? In other words, you, if you didn't look after your dog, you mm. couldn't have one. But uh, the government would the, tell the you. The five that. key things that we're looking at that don't. Ex necessarily extend to that. You know, I'm open to all options. I just want to see some action. We've seen action in, in Northern Ireland. We've seen some action changing the law in Scotland. Wales are looking to introduce new uh, legislation by the end of the year. I want this government to introduce similar legislation so that we can consolidate the Act as, as they stand and, and, and afford both our police and our councils uh, additional protections and powers so we don't see anyone else die. Okay, we'll leave it there. Thank you both very much.